Let's take a look at Power BI's Q&A visual. The Q&A visual allows the user to create visuals based on a natural language question. This gives us the ability to create charts like a filled map or a bar chart or a donut or a table by just typing in a question as if you were asking it to a human being. The Q&A visual can assist users when seeking answers to business questions, but they can also be used to assist designers by allowing them to create visuals more quickly when building a dashboard. Feel free to download this file from the link in the video description so you can follow along with this tutorial and use my sample data set as a way to test and experiment with the Q&A visual. Starting with a blank report, there are two ways that you can insert a Q&A visual into your canvas. One is to go over here to the build icon and in the suggestions library, we have the Q&A visual right here. Another way you can do this if you don't have that panel open is by going up to the home ribbon and in the insert dropdown, we can scroll down and we have the Q&A visual down here in the AI visuals group. I'll give that a click, add the visual to the dashboard, and I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it out and give it the entire dashboard space. The Q&A visual has four main components. First is the question field. This is where the user or designer can type their question. Second are the suggestions. This allows you to select from a list of suggested questions from Power BI or pre-staged questions from the report designer. Third, we've got the convert icon. This converts the proposed visual result into a permanent visual. And finally, the gear icon. This opens the tooling pane. This will give the designer access to the underlying natural language engine. Now, one note here about licensing. If you plan to share this report, both the sharer and the sharee are required to possess a paid license. The report can also be shared if the share is utilizing premium capacity licensing. Now the question is, how did the Power BI engine come up with these questions? If we look back at our data set, we've got a table here called sales data with product information, region, sales rep, state supplier, and I have a series of measures that calculate profit, sales, and tax. The Power BI engine scans your data model looking for fields like these to formulate some very common questions, like top sales by state, top states by profit, or top suppliers by tax. Now let's take a look and see what some of these suggested questions will deliver. So if I clicked on top regions by tax, I could get a bar chart showing top regions by tax. Now I only have five regions, but this has actually reduced it down to the top 10 list. So if I had 100 regions, I probably would just see the top 10. Now if you don't like this visual or the question, we can come up here to our little reset button, give that a click, and try something else. Like how about top states by profit? Now this one didn't show all 50 states, it only showed the top 10. In the question box, it says top states by profit, but it's actually showing the results for the top 10 states. If you wanted to see all states, what we'd have to do is actually invoke this sort of modified question, and then we could come up into our language bar, highlight top 10 and remove that, hit enter, and then we'd see all 50 states. I'm gonna reset that. Now if you're not a fan of any of these suggested questions, then you can just type your own question in. So let's see what happens if we go through an evolution of a question. I have a field over here called sales. So all I'm going to do in the question bar is just type in the name of that field, sales. And when I hit enter, I get a card visual. Because with no other context other than just the word sales, Power BI just assumes you want to see the total of all sales. But what if we modified the question and I said sales by state? When I hit enter, now I see that bar chart that we saw earlier. Also notice in my question, sales and state have a blue underline. This indicates that these are recognized fields from the data model. If I were to change it from sales by state to sales by region, that is also a recognized field. Now, if I typed in something like sales by zone, zone is not a field from the data model, but it still seems to have worked. But notice it's got a dotted blue underline. This indicates that it has found this via a synonym. We'll talk about synonyms in just a moment. So zone is synonymous with region. Now, what if I typed in sales by area? That too is a synonym for region. But let's try a word that's not synonymous with region. Like let's try the word block. Well, in this case, block gets a red underline because it says, hey, I didn't find anything either as a field with that name or something that's been labeled synonymous with that field. So now the Q&A is just ignoring block and going back to as if we had just typed in the word sales. So I'll go back to sales by state. Now suppose you don't wanna see all 50 states, you just want to see the top 10 states. Now here's where how you phrase the question becomes important. So if I say sales by state top 10, I don't get anything, which seems a little weird because that kind of makes sense. What I really need to do is say top 10 sales by state. So taking that off the end, putting it at the beginning, 
Now the natural language engine understands. So it's going to take a little practice to kind of get a feel for how you have to talk to this engine. So show me the top 10 sales by state. Now this gave us a bar chart. But what if you didn't want it as a bar chart? What if you wanted it as, say, a filled map? Well, I could say, show me the top 10 sales by state filled map. And now I have that report being presented as a filled map. If I just typed in the word map, then I get a bubble chart. Maybe you want to see this information as a table. So I'll change it from map to table. And now we get it as a table. Now let's say this is the final visual that I really want on my dashboard. In the upper right corner, this button here, this allows us to turn this suggested visual into a standard visual. It's basically saying, let's make it permanent. So I'll give that a click. All of the components of the Q&A visual go away, and now this converts into just a table visual. So I'm gonna take this visual and move it down here into the corner. So let's look at a few more examples. I'll go up to my visuals library, plug in a Q&A visual, we'll stretch it out. It'll get its final home later. So for the question, we'll type in profit. This of course would give us a KPI of total profit. But if I were to modify that and say profit by region, now I'll get that bar chart we started with earlier, but I'd like profit by region as a donut chart. I'll go ahead and convert this into a standard visual. Now I actually have a real donut chart and I'll size it and place it right about here. Let's try another one, add a Q&A visual. We'll move it, stretch it out, and the question will be tax by state, but I want that as a column chart. And since I'm seeing way too many states, I'll go to the beginning of this and I'll put something like top 15. I'll stress this and put it down here. And finally, our last example, let's start up a QA. and I'll give it the remaining space on my dashboard. And my question will be profit by state filled map. I'll convert that to a standard visual and I'll go back and do the same thing for my column chart. So as you can see from a beginner's perspective, this will help you build visuals more quickly, especially if you're not really familiar with what you need to do with the visual. But also as a designer, because even if you do know how to make these visuals, it might be faster just to type in a question. Now let's dig into the way we can configure the Q&A visual. When you add a Q&A visual to the dashboard, we'll stretch it out. In the upper right corner, there's a gear, and this gear will take us to what's called the tooling pane. Now there are several things we can do in here, but the two features I'm going to focus on are the synonyms and the suggested questions. If we go to synonyms, this will show a list of every field of every table from the data model. It will also show all of the measures that you've created. Now one of the things we can do in here is decide in this include in Q&A column, which fields from the data model will even be considered by the Q&A feature. Notice I have a field here called cost, but I've got it turned off because I don't want Q&A to use that field in the analysis. I have a measure down here that calculates total sales or total cost, and I want it to use that instead. So you can pick and choose exactly which fields from which tables or even entire tables will be considered when you type in your natural language question. Now what we're seeing here, say for product, product is the field name, but the Q&A visual understands that People that aren't familiar with your data model might not know that the field is called product, and they might refer to it as merchandise or item or artifact. Same thing with region. This is why location or area or province, district. In fact, if I click the plus two, we even have zone. That's why that worked earlier, because these synonyms were set up to say, if the user types in this word, then relate it to this other word. Now you can add to these lists. So in your world, product, some users might refer to that as SKU. Well, SKU is not a synonym, but you can add that synonym by clicking add and then just typing in SKU. So now if the user types in SKU, that gets related to product and that gets used in the analysis. So let's go down for state. Some of the synonyms like location, territory, province. But what if we might want to refer to it as republic? Well, we can add it as a synonym or maybe commonwealth. Going down into my measures section, for tax, we have built-in synonyms like duty, levy, toll, due, excise, and also tariff. But what about something like fee or tribute? And you can add as many synonyms as you wish. If it turns out that there's a built-in synonym that you don't want to respond, like looking up here in the state, what if I don't want nationality? Because maybe nationality is associated with country, so I could remove that as a synonym. Of course, if I have a synonym that I added, like let's say that I add region, but then I realize, wait a minute, I already have a field called region, that's confusing, well then I can just delete that synonym. 
There's no need to save because these saves are instantaneous. I'll close that. Now let me show you another way to get to that Q&A tooling pane. And this is by going up to the modeling tab and then we have a button here that says Q&A setup. Now from here, let's look at the suggested questions. So remember the suggested questions came up automatically through Power BI through an analysis of the data set. But if you wish to pre-stage some questions, so questions you know the users are going to ask, but what the suggested questions would not predict. So suppose I know my users might be interested in seeing a report that shows the sales of all products that contain the word ball. So just like before, I could come up here and type in the word sales, hit enter, and I'll see my KPI. If I say sales by product, now I see a bar chart that shows all sales by product. But now I'll apply a filter that says show all sales by product that contains ball. And now I'm only seeing golf balls, baseballs, footballs, basketballs, and tennis balls. If I like that question, I'll go ahead and hit add. And this will now be a suggested question whenever the user creates a Q&A visual. So let's try another question. How about tax by region, but where that region equals Midwest? Now we get a multi-row card visual. I'll add that to the list of suggested questions. Since a multi-row card can show multiple calculations, what if we change the question and say tax and sales by region equals Midwest? Or how about tax and sales and profit by region equals Midwest? I'll go ahead and add that as well. We'll save this and close this tooling pane. Notice now the suggested questions are the ones that we offer, not the ones that Power BI assumes we want to ask. So if I were to start this over, here I am blank canvas, I'll go up to home, go into my visuals library, add a Q&A visual, and those questions are automatically asked. So now if the user clicks on one of these, it will generate that visualization. Let's try a different one, click, and now I get that visual. Now let's go back up to that tooling pane for a moment and go back into the suggested questions. One of the limitations of the suggested questions is that multiple conditions are not supported in certain situations. So if I typed in sales and then narrowed it down by tennis balls and then show it as a bar chart. Well, what if I wanna see tennis balls and golf balls? So if I say sales by tennis balls and golf balls, then I don't get anything. So it's likely you may encounter some issues when you're creating some very complicated questions. The Q&A won't create everything, but it will create a lot. So that's the Q&A visual. Download this file so you can experiment and try to get a feel for how to ask questions to this feature, and then see if you don't expedite your development process. Thank you for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.